Hi there, and welcome to Neophyte.tv, the technology review with two points of view. My name is Tiffany Young. And I'm Ben Friedman. And every Monday, we bring you two unique points of view on some of the latest gadgets, software, and websites, along with the week's top stories. Don't forget to visit our website at www.neophyte.tv to subscribe to this podcast or to send us your questions. You can even use our audio voice link to leave us voicemail questions using your computer's microphone. This week, we'll be looking at the HP PSC1510XI all-in-one printer, the Techno News website, dig.com, and the iPod Hi-Fi. We'll also answer some of your questions sent to us via email. But first, let's take a look at some of the news making headlines this week. PC World Magazine recently tested one of the first brand new HD DVD players on the market, the HD XA1 from Toshiba. HD DVD is one of the two formats of high def discs competing to replace DVDs for high definition movies. Their initial report suggests the video quality is great, but the machine's responsiveness is disappointingly slow. TiVo this week won a lawsuit against EchoStar for patent infringement, winning $74 million from the communications company, although EchoStar can still appeal. At issue was technology built into the company's popular digital video recorder. The verdict is key to TiVo's future, as the cash-strapped company has yet to earn a profit in its nine-year history. Apple Computer is facing a lawsuit over the technology in the iPod, the iTunes Music Store, and its QuickTime media software. Burst.com, which makes software for sending audio and video over the Internet, filed the lawsuit last Monday, alleging that Apple infringed on four patents owned by Burst. In March, Burst was paid $60 million by Microsoft to settle another patent quarrel. Sprint has launched a service designed to help parents keep track of their kids. The service, called Sprint Family Locator, uses GPS to pinpoint a child's location and then display it on an interactive map along with the street address and surrounding landmarks. The child is notified by a text message each time his or her location is provided to the parent. AOL is being accused of censoring controversial email by a group that disagrees with an upcoming AOL proposal. The group DearAOL.com was formed to protest AOL's certified email program where you can pay to have email passed through a spam filter. They claim that AOL is blocking people who want to support Dear AOL, filtering their emails as spam. AOL claims the problem was merely an inadvertent error and has since been fixed. Dell this week released the M1710, a gaming notebook that improves on performance offered by Dell's previous gaming notebooks by about 35%. The M1710 includes such fancy extras as a light-up touchpad and 16-color perimeter lighting. The new laptop marks Dell's continued foray into the gaming market served by such vendors as Falcon Northwest and Voodoo PC. In March, Dell introduced the super-expensive Renegade model, and recently they acquired Alienware, a boutique PC supplier that specialized in gaming machines. For more than 20 years, VideoGuys.com has been the leading sellers of digital video editing and production equipment. And now they are leading the way into high def. Whether you're just getting started in the video editing or you're a seasoned broadcast professional, VideoGuys.com has the information you need to find the best hardware and software for your needs. Their knowledgeable staff will help you put together a system to edit DV, HDV and HD, and create DVDs, HD DVDs, and Blu-ray DVD discs. Visit them today at www.videoguys.com, and don't forget they have a 30-day money-back guarantee and free tech support on every product they sell. Welcome back to Neophyte.tv. In this spotlight, we're going to be looking at the HP PSC1510XI all-in-one <laughs> printer, which uh, I think is a really amazing value for what you get. This printer uh, is under 100 bucks. You get a, uh, a, a printer, a scanner, and a copier 
all in one unit, uh, hooks up via USB, and uh, it's all for $100. And it prints pretty quickly, which is one thing I like about it is that for a, an inexpensive printer, it, it prints pretty fast. Hooked up the printer, easy to set up, and, and uh, gets that page out quickly. Um, I must have missed it. Did you say that it had a fax? No, no fax. <laughs> okay. So when, it, when you say all-in-one, do you mean almost all-in-one? Yes. <laughs> For, it's the HP PSC 1510 XI, almost was, all in one. Right, for under $100. That's no, what you right. meant to say, right? Um, uh, well, this product is great for those things that you did mention. However, um, it does not have a fax. So I think to claim to have an all-in-one product is a little bit misleading because if I was just to look at this box and not uh, really look at the details of it, I would assume that it would have a fax. Most all-in-ones, so, I think you're right, have a fax built in, right. and this one and this one doesn't. One thing I did like about this product is that it has on the front here, you can see this little port where you can hook, uh, you can hook your digital camera up to it and you can print pictures directly from your camera. So without having to turn on your PC or anything like that, you can hook your camera up uh, and, uh, and print directly from your camera. Well, now you make that sound really easy, but don't you have to switch out your print cartridge in order to print quality pictures? Yes. If you want the top so. quality, you have to put a different cartridge in. So, I mean, to me, that seems like a really big pain to not only hook up my camera, which by USB is nice, but to actually have to change your print cartridge to get a good quality photo is not something that I think would be um, desirable in a product. It is true. And I must admit that the ink cartridges on this printer are also kind of small. Uh, I, I found I didn't get as many right. pages as they claimed I would get on them, and, and right. they're also expensive. That's, I think it's one of the things they get you with with these cheap under $100 right. uh, devices is then you have to go out and buy the ink cartridges, exactly. and the ink cartridges are $20, 30 40 for Yeah, so they cartridge. make up for it in the ink cartridge fee. You think they, one day they they'll, just, they'll just give the printer away? Here, take the printer. I know, here, buy our ink cartridge. It's going to be $99 every two months, yeah. but, you know, it's kind of like it'll the cell pay phone for model. itself in a year. <laughs> it's kind of like the cell phone model. Exactly, right, right. So to wrap up, I like this device. I thought it scanned well and printed quickly, and the quality was acceptable. Uh, I thought it was faster than most, and I liked the direct printing from the camera. Uh, so I gave it a 3 out of 5. Um, I'm going to give this product a 1 for a couple of reasons. Number 1, it doesn't have a fax. Um, swapping out the ink cartridges gives it a good minus three in my book. So uh, a one for me on this product. Um, it does look aesthetically pleasing, but I have to say it's a little kind of cheapy feeling. So it, it, it not, is kind of plasticky. Here's the, uh, the lid. You pop it up to uh, to scan under there. Right. So you give it a one. I give it a one. So that's a a three out of five for me. One out of five from Tiffany. That gives this product four out of ten. Not uh, not the best, but again, it's under $100, so uh, I guess you get what you pay for. Well, I think you should get it for free for the price of the ink cartridges. <laughs> Just pay for the ink cartridges. <laughs> exactly. Right. It should be free. <laughs> All right, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. If you're looking for a custom-built computer system created to the exact specifications you're looking for, look no further than Puget Custom Computers at www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. Puget builds computers the way you want them built. They work hard to take the hype out of computer building, to help you make good decisions, and to help save you from paying for things you don't need. It's their goal to provide you with everything you need to have a hassle-free computing experience. For your next PC, look up www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. Welcome back to Neophyte.tv. In this spotlight, we're going to be covering the very popular website, dig.com. Um, it's a news site that talks about what's popular in technology. What's really, really great about this site that I absolutely love is that it's rated by people for people. It's not sponsored by some corporate big brother, someone or other patting somebody's pockets. Um, I really value these stories because it's voted on by people who read them. And the most popular uh, stories end up on the front pages, so if you're kind of in a rush, you can really look through the, maybe the first page of the website and get the most popular stories voted by other people. I think this is a very cool website as well. I like the same thing. Anyone can submit a story, right. and if it's popular or if, you, you know, if it's voted on, it gets pushed to the front page. Right. There's some problems here. One of the big problems is things, things, this thing called the dig effect. And that is that when you get, there's so many users using the system right now that if you, somebody links to your story and, uh, or to your website, 
um, almost instantly, so many people will look at your website, it will crash your website. Are you kidding? No, it will wow. crash your website. It's called the dig that. effect. And I guess that's okay yeah. if, if you are prepared for it. Maybe you put your story on a robust server that can handle it. Right. But if, you're, if it's not on a, a server with a lot of bandwidth that can handle a lot right. of page traffic, um, you know, I, it's going to be a real problem. The other issue is, tell me if you didn't find this. There's quite often you see storage repeated, and not right, just repeated, not just yes. repeated on mm -hmm. the, the same day, but like two or three weeks later, someone will post the same story right. that you it, just saw. It's like the new wave of people have had a chance to kind of go on and see the stories. Well, at least what I see on those repeat stories, it, there was more than two waves of people that liked them. So I'm sure it's a good story. Right, and although it's irritating to see it again. <laughs> well, I also like the comments section. Yeah, every story right. has comments. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's often when you know it's a repeat story. Like someone will go, oh, I saw this two months ago, or I saw this two weeks ago. This was out two years ago. Right. You know, so you'll often in the comments uh, section. I know uh, I have some friends of mine that look at this, mm -hmm. and they wonder if this is really news, though. It's not, it's not news like Associated Press or, or Ziff Davis or anything. This is, you know, this, right. Some people think of this as more just sort of self-promotion, where you put up a link on there or something you want to see. Uh, and it, uh, if you're lucky, you make it to the front page. Well, I would say that it's kind of like a, the voices of all consumerism kind of in one spot, with the common theme of technology being the, the thread of commonality that brings everyone together. What I like about it is that maybe what may not be interesting to you, and you may think is maybe not new, is maybe very interesting to somebody else. Maybe I'm looking on there and I'm looking for something specific and I find something else I had no idea about. Well, that wouldn't have been there if someone hadn't put on a link, voted on it, you know, with all all these other people on this front page, I've learned more from reading some of those stories than I have, you know, combing the internet for two days. You're definitely so. going to find stories on here that you won't see anywhere else. Exactly, and that's but my point. You right. do see the big stories too. So, mm -hmm. you know, when Sony comes out with their rootkit issue or when Apple introduces a new product, right. I think this is one of the first places you're going to see that story. I guess there are these, you know, uber geeks out there that are constantly <laughs> surfing the net. Geek. I know, because you think, you know, you'll see it sooner, sooner or later. How the these uber people, geek, new, new, new vocabulary. <laughs> how new to you, me. You're searching for right. these uh, things. You're going you're, right. you're gonna to see the news here probably before you're going to see it anywhere else. Right. So right. That well, is, that's, uh, that's, I, I trust that about it. And again, it's, it's the, the people are voting on it, which, uh, you know, to me, it's a, kind of like a consumer reports of, of technology news. And, you know, with some other things throwing in there for variety and flavor, which makes it unique and different and, and people-oriented. There so. are definitely some odd stories uh, on there, you know, uh, things about, you know, how to do time travel and uh, stuff like that. And you're thinking... Right. You know, Time travel is not really news, but it's an interesting story that somebody... Well, look at what we're, we're looking at a site, though, that brings populations of people that span across the globe together on one site. You're going to get a lot of different types of things. And it does, bring, things, it does you know, bring a lot some, of people together. There's a heck does. of a lot of people that are on there. The traffic is way up. Right, uh, it, right. For a long time, there was another website called Slashdot, a very popular technology uh -huh. website. And I think that the uh, dig, I think I read the other day, Maybe it was on Dig. I'm not sure that's that Dig it is. Probably uh, was. The Dig is uh, right. surpassing. If it hasn't almost mm. already surpassed, it's about to surpass Slashdot in, in uh, right. traffic. So there's definitely something uh, something big here. I'm not sure what the business model is right. yet, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely an interesting site. Exactly. I'm going to give it a five. I think this is a five star site, um, simply for the facts that we we previous we just mentioned. Also um, because I love the way that this site is run based on people voting on other people's stories. And so. I I really like this site as well. So no disagreement for me. I'm going to mm -hmm. take a point off. Uh, for uh, the fact that there are some repeated stories, and that if you're not expecting the uh, the, the traffic, <laughs> this will take down or, or your the time side. travel, or the time travel. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the time poor guy with the time concept. travel website. I'm sure he got slammed. I mean, <laughs> right. Oh, and and make sure that if you do post something on dig.com, that you uh, your uh, server can handle it. So that's four out of five for Ben, and five out of five for me. So that's a nine for dig.com, the website. We'll be right back after this. Planning an event or convention? Launching a new product? Want to give potential trade show customers direct professional access to your website? Short term, Kiosk Rentals from kioskforrent.com is the answer. Prompt friendly service and commitment to customer care will make your kiosk rental easy and worry free. So whether you need a multi-unit package for a marketing campaign, two units for a trade show, or a single unit to add professionalism to a special event, kiosksforrent.com is your preferred kiosk rental solution.
Hi there, and welcome back to Neophyte.tv. In this spotlight, we're going to be looking at this uh, really neat new set of speakers from Apple designed to be integrated with uh, your iPod, and it's called uh, the Apple's Hi-Fi system. Uh, it's, uh, and I, I really like this. It's, it's a portable uh, set of speakers. In fact, let me pop the front off. You can see the speakers in here. There they are. Uh, that uh, uh, I guess that's two tweeters for stereo, and you get the subwoofer in the middle and the, the cool tuned ports in there to, to get a nice, uh, rich bass out of there. Your iPod sits in the top. It comes with adapters for pretty much any kind of iPod uh, that you have. And, you know, I have to tell you, Tiffany, I am not a guy that wears headphones a lot. I actually right. like to have little speakers that I can put in my kitchen or my living room, right. uh, you know, carry it from place to place, and these sound pretty darn good. Well, um, I think it looks uh, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, as far as portability, though, I don't think it's very portable. And let me show you why. This actual system, is it's not light. I mean, I'm kind of straining, and I'm, I'm not a, a weakling or anything. Yeah, I've got to tell you, it, <laughs> I mean, it not, takes batteries, but I don't even have the batteries in here yet. So, yeah, so you're right. How many is, batteries does it take? I think it's six D cells. Okay, now add six D cell batteries to that weight already. So that's going to be another pound or two, I would guess. Yeah, so as far as portability is concerned, I wouldn't really sell this as a portable device. I'd say it's more of a kind of a standalone unit, put it in one place, be comfortable with it. Um, it does come with a really nice remote, so that's nice. That is true. I like so, this. This is a little remote. So right. if you're sitting in your uh, armchair uh, and uh, you don't want to get up to reach over to your iPod, you can uh, click on the, uh, the remote. It has you know, just the basic functions, right. but it's, uh, it's, and it's infrared and it's doable. But it's, uh, it's pretty cute, and I like the fact that uh, you, know, you can be sitting back. Like I said, I'm not, not, not big on the, uh, wearing the headphones. Right, right. Uh, and I'd be more prone to use that remote rather than move this device. Because, yeah, because it's the remote just heavy. is actually not... is much lighter. Would you like to right. lift the remote as well so you can show people? It's much better than this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another thing that um, I don't like about this particular product is that it's expensive. I I think for three hundred and fifty dollars that it's not really good value for for what you get. I think um, the Bose surround system that um, is a new that goes with the iPod is actually um, a more it, it's lighter and it um, the acoustics are actually better than what I've I've heard in this particular um, unit. So you so, like the sound of the Bose better? I as, really as do. Well. I, I just can't. I just can't. Uh, uh, and Bose, you know, they have they're known as the small speaker. You know, guru. they really they are good. I mean, our thing. little iPod uh, Bose. Uh, uh, system that we have is uh, is really good. I mean, it's it's really acoustically uh, pleasing. It really fills the room with some very good, high quality music, and it's lighter. It's not as heavy as as this unit is. Um, another really big downfall for me on this unit is that it doesn't have any video output. So you can't hook it to your TV. No, you can't. Which now I think is crazy. Your, you can hook your iPod to the TV, right? But then you've got to hook up another cable. Right, which makes it very inconvenient, um, and I think for the price for three fifty, it should be an integrated um, in here. Uh, with you're basically paying for the integration. I think I think you're really getting kind of gypped on that end yes, by not I having guess that's it in. True. So, yeah, it would yeah. be good if it had a, a video output on the back or something, so you could hook right. it to uh, hook it to the TV and, and what have you. But exactly, exactly. In its defense, so. you can still plug the cable into the uh, iPod in the top here, so you can watch your video iPod. You can, but for three fifty, why do the extra step? That is true. <laughs> I can't argue with that. For 350 yeah. it would be nice to have that, yeah. uh, that integration right. uh, built in. So uh, I thought it had a very nice design. Uh, it is portable, although heavy, and, and it has the uh, cute remote. I give this a 4 out of 5. And I'm going to give this a 3. Um, for all the reasons that we just mentioned, I think it lost a couple points definitely for its heaviness and a full point definitely for not having an output for video. So, so that's uh, 7 out of 10 for Apple's uh, iPod Hi-Fi speakers. And stay tuned, we'll be right back. Thanks. As a leader in the video industry for over 10 years, Smart Sound has defined innovation in music scoring. Now with their flagship product, Sonic Fire Pro version 4, they take the art of music scoring to a new level. This new version introduces a technology called mood mapping. Mood mapping allows the user to simply identify points on a timeline where the mood of their video changes and apply mood markers. Then the user simply selects the mix or feel of the music from a pull-down menu that fits the mood of each scene best. With a simple click of the mouse, you can duck for dialogue, 
make the music atmospheric, make it heavy, take out the horns, limit it to just drums and bass, or remove the melody. Whatever mix and feel you want, it's now immediately at your fingertips. And if you want to customize it further, you have easy access to each instrument or section. Mood mapping will redefine audio for video. See it in action at www.smartsound.com. And welcome back to Neophyte.tv. This is the segment of the show where uh, we try to answer some of the email that gets mm -hmm. sent to us uh, every week. And the first one is, I'm looking to buy a new LCD display. Should I go with a widescreen model or a normal size screen? Normal being, I guess, the old Grandma square. Grandma style. Grandma screen. style. That is a darn silly question. Whoever, <laughs> whoever emailed which way you're that, going. why would you want to go with a normal screen when there's so much more versatility in the widescreen? I mean, you can work all day on your computer, and then you have the versatility to pop in a DVD and watch it in widescreen. You know, what's... No, no, no old, no no big and bulky. We want skinny and sleek and aesthetically pleasing. Skinny, it's a widescreen. No, but it's skinny widescreen. That's a nice. They're nice. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> skinny widescreen. The, the yeah. only, uh, I actually agree with you. I okay. like the widescreen as well. The only thing Good. that I would say is be careful if you're buying a 17-inch or a 19-inch screen or whatever you're buying. Uh, although you get more width, you lose height. So if right. you end up scrolling, you know, if you end up looking at web pages that are long, you tend to have to scroll them more because you have more horizontal dots but less vertical dots. So I guess that wasn't such a silly question from our email viewer because that's true. That's true. You do lose a little bit. If you if here. you if you do a lot of web surfing. Right. Although I got to tell you, I like the fact on widescreens that you can put like two pages side by side. And that's nice. That that's is nice, very nice too. And the DVD thing, the widescreen you were talking about. Right. They right, look very right. cool. I still think widescreen though is the way to go. I our uh, second email question for the day is: What's the best way to buy music over the internet? Is that the $24,000 question? It or is. the $64,000 question, right? <laughs> I have to tell you, I still think the internet way of downloading music is still half baked. Okay, right, I, right, I like okay. iTunes, yeah, right. but here's the thing uh, you can buy, for about the same money you'd mm -hmm. buy a disc on iTunes, you can get a CD used off of half.com, or if it's a brand new CD, you do pay a few dollars more. But when you get the CD, you own the CD. You, it's higher quality than the music you download from the stores. It's, it's a, a, uh, encoded in a much higher quality than you get from iTunes. Uh, and you can then rip it in and use it on your computer or on any kind of MP3 player. Whereas the problem with iTunes, which I like, I like iTunes, but you're limited to using it on an iPod. Okay, I have two comments to that, that statement. One is, one is when you get the CD from half dot com or another wherever you go to get your CD. Um, so many people want things on demand. I mean, everything's right now. I want it here. I want it for today. I want it for this workout. I want it for tonight. So a lot of people don't, you know, they're willing to sacrifice the quality for the right now factor. Um, the second part of that is that I feel very strongly that the encoding is um, very unfair on the, Apple. The copy protection. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They have it in, in such a way that they make it very hard to pull your files um, and move them anywhere after you've paid for them. I, I don't think that's fair at all. Yeah, you, you bought so, it. The, other, the right. one good thing about iTunes, though, is that you can just buy like a song at a time. You don't have to buy the right. whole album if you don't want it. If it's just one song you exactly. want to buy. Exactly. Exactly. And how many times have you bought an album and you only like one or two songs? It, that is exactly what happens to me. It happens to me all the time. It, 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 before iTunes, I thought it was the greatest thing. iTunes or a couple other sites, I'm not sure if I can mention or not, but but that was we'll the best. We want to get the FBI crawling down our, with our exactly, uh, illegal exactly. music downloader over here. <laughs> so, um, but one thing I did run into with the DVDs, buying the DVDs. CDs. I mean CDs, thank you. The CDs is that um, they have copyright protection as well. So even some, some of the, the new newer, ones do. the new ones do. So yep. how do you get them in? And if you buy them, then you're stuck with a, now a CD, the same as you're stuck in iTunes. And Either way, you're stuck. You're that stuck, you that is true. There's, there's now copy protection. I think uh, Sony just had a big fiasco with some of the copy protection they put on right. uh, on there. Don't worry, people. We're, we're working on it. <laughs> we're, we, we are. We are. We're going to figure out a solution for this. I know it. So I guess there, <laughs> there are many different ways of downloading right. music uh, over the Internet. Yeah. But my personal preference would still be to get the CD, although... I agree with you. Then right. you have to wait for it, and then you're stuck it with the CD. It seems like there's, a, you know, catch twenty two. No matter how you so look at no it, so there's no perfect. You know, way. there's no, there's no great answer at the moment. And um, with that, but I have uh, hope. I have hope. With that. <laughs> 
very vague and ambiguous answer to a question. Right. That'll wrap it up for uh, <laughs> Neofight.tv. Hey, be sure to stop by our website, www.neo-fight.tv. Bookmark the show or subscribe to the show with one of your favorite uh, podcast uh, aggregators. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to see you here uh, next Monday. Thanks for watching. Oh, hey, or also send us a video blog. We'd love to see those. Video blogs video are great. Blogs. Send us an yeah. email if you've got uh, some video that you'd like to see on the show of uh, some new gadget or, or Right, or question that we can answer and yeah. not be ambiguous. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. See you next week.